Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy CJ DS PC style curved jaw spacer coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy coupling installation guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website under installation instructions utilizing the resource tab. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The following components are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy CJ DSPC curved jaw spacer coupling. You should have two standard curved jaw hubs, two jaw rings, two curved jaw spiders, the dropout spacer, and the required hex head bolts. Curved jaw spiders are color coded based on the shore hardness and torque capacity of the material. Always inspect the components to ensure the parts are the proper parts that you ordered. Review your application details to ensure that this is the proper coupling to accommodate your application requirements. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the specific coupling installation guide readily available when installing your Lovejoy coupling. The installation guide contains charts that show the necessary details including allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain performance and dimensional information important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, a calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the set screws, socket for hex head bolts, vernier calipers, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a gap micrometer, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Since the equipment is already in place, this is a good time to check the shaft separation and make sure it matches the BSE or shaft separation value for the coupling as ordered. This dimension should be roughly the length of the spacer at the flange faces plus two times the G or gap width of the spider as found in the installation guide. Next we will inspect the shaft and clean off any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub should also be cleaned to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Before installing the hub, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side to side movement. The end of the key should line up with both the end of the shaft and the hub. Please note that the Lovejoy curved jaw coupling hubs are manufactured with a clearance or slip fit and the hubs should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. 
We will tighten the set screw in the first hub to the recommended torque settings using a calibrated torque wrench. The second hub will be hand tightened to allow for some minor adjustments once the coupling is assembled. We will tighten the set screw in that hub when all components are in place. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the set screws are not tightened properly, the hub could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the set screws are too tight, they could damage the key, shaft, or the hub. Insert a spider into each of the hubs on the shafts. Then place the jaw rings into each of the spiders. The spacer will be piloted to the jaw rings to ensure concentricity, and this pilot may require moving one hub back on the shaft slightly to provide clearance for the spacer. Move the spacer into place between the jaw rings and insert bolts through the spacer, threading the bolts into the jaw rings. The one hub can be moved back against the spacer and the flange bolts should be hand tightened until all the screws are in place. With a calibrated torque wrench, tighten the flange bolts to the torque specified in the following chart. The bolts should be tightened using the industry standard procedure for tightening bolts. Use a crisscross pattern starting at 50% of the specified torque, then 75%, then the full torque. At this time, tighten the set screw in the second hub. Measure the gap between the face of the jaw ring and the spacer on each end of the coupling. Compare this measurement with the G or gap dimension for the spider as found in the installation guide. This gap should match the installation guide to plus or minus 132nd of an inch. Depending on the length of the spacer, you may be able to check alignment with a straight edge or dial indicator. Angular misalignment must not be greater than one degree, and the parallel offset is dependent on the length of the spacer. You should check alignment before going any further with this installation. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the tightness of any screws or fasteners with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy. Building trust since 1900.